Sports Fan Network, the Sporting Lockdown with Dan McLeod and Eddie Redskins. Sunday afternoon, you know what it is, it's Sport on Brawl time with the team, the Lockdown team. No Etsy Red Scarf today, but riding shotgun, we got JB the Ultimate Rider. What's up? JB, how's it going man? It's going very well, thank you, a lot of awesome sport this week. Yeah, yeah i tell you what, I've been really, really interested in the development of the Cricket World Cup and what's happening and a few little surprise teams I think which are making a bit of an impact. Definitely, definitely, some teams that people might have written off in the past or thought wouldn't, wouldn't go that well are um, definitely starting to rear their, their heads. There's no one else with us today, it's just you, oh no, sorry, Nate the, <laughs> Nate the white guy. Hey, how's it? How's it going? Good. I suppose we. Thanks are, for including me. Are we being racist? Just a little bit. Just a little Once tiny again, bit. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say. This is only two of you this time. I, I want to say that <laughs> I think you look outstanding in your promo photo that we, we did earlier in the week. Looks Thanks. great. You, 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 got, you got the blue eyes out. You got the thoughtful pose. The thoughtful pose. As, as our good friend James pointed out, uh, one of those things did not look like the others. Indeed. <laughs> I don't understand your the point you're trying to make. Yeah, you had a hat on. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense then. The Sporting Lockdown every Sunday brought to you live thanks to the guys at the Tap Room, 74 Wyndham Street in the city. The ultimate sporting location for anybody in Auckland City. You want to watch UFC, you want to watch cricket, you want to watch rugby, check them out. They're, they're ready to have you. They're ready to have you. I, I didn't know what else to say there. I was, I was a, you know, you, 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 try, you try and promo a place and you just sound like an absolute tool. Um, you can check them out, um, drinkfromthetap.co.nz, where you can make bookings and all that sort of stuff. Check them out with their grab one deals Excellent as well. Food. Such good food. You like that? You yeah, like yeah. the food? It's pretty. The food is so good. It's, so, it's like it's so good. There's a oh, big dude. plate of chips oh. in front of you. <laughs> hey, so Cricket World Cup obviously is, is, is headlining for us this week because we're getting into the business stage of the Cricket World Cup. We've, 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 we've had the... Uh, um, the feel out process yeah the feel out process yeah. we've, we've, we've been able to play everybody in the pool almost once yeah. now um, what I don't like about this for the for the Black Caps is the 8 day layoff that they have from last yeah. week's game that, now, yeah it's a big, big gap it's a long enough to sort of go off the board well when you consider a lot of teams um, are playing every 3 or 4 days the Black yeah. Caps seem to have a pretty easy draw even Australia who's yeah. co-hosting out of Australia even they've had a pretty a pretty intense draw yeah, um, yeah. It seems to me like the Black Caps is just a week by week thing, so I'm not too sure how it's going to affect them. They currently uh, got Afghanistan. What's that? 151 for eight. In the forty. Better than I thought. They in were. The fo- I, in the I was um, watching with some friends this morning. Shout out to Matt and Badman. And um, yeah, it looked like you know Afghanistan were going to be gone in the first hour. So credit to them to stick. 46 for four. I think I saw at one stage yeah, they were. So yeah. they've, they've made a really good comeback. And. Yeah, and, and put themselves back into the game. And the best thing about it, too, it creates a little bit of a contest, gives the Black Caps a target to, to go after now. Yeah, it's nice to see the, the smaller kind of um, second-tier nations uh, actually putting up a, a good fight. Like, um, you're looking at kind of the, the results, and, and some of the teams have come out and, and given some of the bigger nations not not a serious scare, but they've made them come out and play their best game to win, which is, sure. which is nice. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So moving forward, the Black Caps playing Afghanistan today. Should be an easy victory, we'll soon see. I mean, they, they yep. faulted against Scotland against a pretty similar total. To be fair, Australia should have been an easy victory after our bowling definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, but that's in saying that though, Australia were always going to be able to match the Black yeah, Caps yeah. on the bowling front as well, so you have to yeah. take that into perspective. Hey, you should be careful not to knock that too many times. Sorry. Yeah, it's like a big reunion. Are you in a new position today? Oh, how, how are you finding? You're sitting in Etty Red Scarf seat with yeah, the Red yeah. Scarf night with us today. Yeah, there's a lot of responsibility on do you realise? Mostly just to not knock the mic down. Yeah, yeah, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I, I find that thing. I find that really interesting. Anyway, with you moving around all the time and just being an absolute general mess and yeah, you know, not my life. Is. Yeah, well, you're a messy guy. So, um, looking at what's going to happen with with the, the makeup of the quarterfinals and the semifinals and that sort of thing, one of the one of the um, surprise surprise impact teams in this World Cup so far has been Pakistan. Pakistan uh, defeating South Africa the other night by was it 29 runs? Yeah. Yep. Um, and th- and that, that was a surprise. It was, it was, a, it was a relatively modest total too so yeah. there, there wasn't necessarily um, um, a lot of danger for South no. Africa leading into it. That's Pakistan right. have been playing relatively I think um, softly leading into the World Cup but coming out of um, this past 
few, few weeks that they've had, particularly after um, going down to India, who have been the other team, I think, yep. from the subcontinent, which have started to prove very and show well. a lot of stouch as well. In fact, India, but for me, are starting to become a little bit of a warrior. I mean, would I rather play a South African? I mean, I posed the question last week where That's I said, right. I think we'd rather play a South African, t- uh, sorry, an Indian team again, th- as opposed to South, South Africans. Team, yeah. But now I'm looking at it and going, well, the South Africans are cracking out a bit of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Pakistan really had them under the pump a little bit. Um, well, when you kick off a tournament with that much momentum, um, you know, it's, it's always going to be difficult to maintain that. So, you know, the South Africans might be suffering from a bit of fatigue in, in that respect. Well, I mean, where do you think where do you think the Black Caps would need to be, or whether they'd want to become semi-final time? Where do you, obviously Eden Park, but against yeah. who? Anyone. I mean, really, cr- cricket's one of those games I've always found where one guy really can win a match. Like if McCullum comes out and hits 100, then we're probably going to do quite well. If, if that batting order comes out and just fails, it might not matter who it's against. Also, so home ground means a lot in, yeah, a, in well, cricket, yeah. especially, you know, World Cup cricket, you know, the nostalgia of New Zealand at home playing in the semis or something like didn't that. Didn't help them in 92. Did, definitely didn't, but, you know, there's like a sense of, um, you know, catharsis needed there and, and we could get there this year. And Eden Park's a good ground to chase right. on because it's got those small boundaries. If you need to That's go out it. and be aggressive, you can usually get away with a mishit and still get a six. Well, you know, with the huge bats that um, that have been sort of... Yeah, exactly, people yeah. Have been talking about how the bats are just getting bigger and bigger and lighter and lighter now so um, you know I, you still haven't answered the question for you JB who do you want to see the Black Cavs take on come semi-final time um, I, and, that, and, that's, and that's taken into account that they make it through to the semi-final yeah, yeah. yeah. well um, you know uh, India would, would be my choice because historically they, they have been the team that we would be able to beat at home. Uh, so if I could choose it, it would be India for me. You know, g- Even given their, their current run of form, I would still take them at home over South Africa who can always turn it on against New Zealand. We're joined again this week by our guest podcaster, Matt Groves. How are you doing, Matt G? What's up, boys? Good, man. What's That's happening with you? How's your week been? Oh, busy, man. Busy. Uh, not us. We've been fucking around at home. <laughs> <laughs> Very detailed there. Yeah, busy. Yeah, that was it. That yeah, was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah busy, 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 busy. Busy to tell you what I've been doing. I don't, need, I don't need to bore you guys with my life details, but um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for those listening, I'll read it on your Facebook. For those listening, <laughs> uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers are thirty-nine twenty-five up over the Phoenix yeah, Suns yeah. in Cleveland um, at the Quickens Arena at the Q at the Q. For you, Matt, who do you want to see the Black Cabs take on come semi-final time? Semi-final time, Eden Park. I think, yeah, I'd like to see India. Granted that the other two teams and the way the sort of the playoff um, or semi-finals look like they're going to shape up is is going to be Australia, South Africa, and the other one. Yeah. Um, so, out of those, out of those three, it would probably have to be uh, India. But you know, any one of those teams could beat each other on the day. It's just one of those things. Um, but like JB said. Sort of our track record at home against India. Yeah. Um, Eden Park always turns on a cracker of a game as well, which is uh, the, the, is, is going to be the good part about it. That uh, no matter who's playing there, um, it's going to be good. So there's no doubt in the class of AB de Villiers out of the South African team, even yeah. in a losing effort, yeah. mm. he still looks like a classy a classy player all round, no matter what. Yeah, he's definitely the pick of the bunch for the batters yesterday. Like everyone was struggling. It seemed like I mean, chasing down 200, you think would be an easy total, but everyone struggled except for him, who came out and once again. Had an incredible innings. Ball was always going to move around a lot too, and, and does here yeah. in New Zealand a lot. But with the weather the way it was yesterday, yeah. the humidity as high as it was, it was always going to be massive. So yeah, it was, it was a typical muggy Auckland day. That's so. right. So for me, I mean, I'm quite happy to see them play either South Africa or India at this stage. Now, I just want to see us get through the quarterfinals. Yeah, I was going to say, man, like there's a big quarterfinal round to go, and um, I reckon there might be a few surprises in there. I think, uh, you know, West Indies if they bang on through, that there's a you know, a couple of their boys fire up on the right day. Chris Gale hits one of those couple of hundreds, man, and then uh, there's an upset in the in the in the complex uh, the, in the makeup there somewhere. Or he could go for two. So out of Napier <laughs> yeah. at the moment, the uh, Afghanis are 152 for eight in the 42nd over. Uh, sorry, after 43 overs, um, Dan Vittori brought up 300 one day international wickets just before. Awesome, man. Mm. What did he get a four for? Um, I'm he did. He did. He, he has got a four for. Uh, he took four for uh, four for twelve. At, yeah, on a, ten, right? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. on a pretty flat wicket, which might have been eighteen. Might have been eighteen. Yeah. I think yeah. dealt to in the last. What one. a beast! <laughs> so, I mean, there's no doubting Dan Vittori's class, and I think yeah. I was I was a little bit worried. I think we had this discussion leading into uh, the Cricket World Cup over who they go with, either McCullum or where they go with Vittori. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm so happy they went with with, with Vittori. 
I'm so happy they've gone with his experience, his he's class. He's a gamer as well. But he, he, he just, he just, he is, a, he is still to this day for a guy who doesn't turn the ball a lot. Yeah. He is a world class bowler um, by anyone's standards, and he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll go down as one of the greats in New Zealand cricket. And I think we'll go down as, as a highly respected international cricketer, you know, around the world. You look at them. Um, there was an interview done out, um, with through um, is it is it Super Sport out of out of South Africa. Um, and they did a and an, they interviewed a whole bunch of club cricketers, and their level of respect that they give Dan Vittori is, yeah. is huge. Um, as, as the way that he adapted his play, the way he adapted his bat or improved his batting over the years. Mm. And, and you're talking about a guy who was seven. I mean, I saw her on uh, Tony Veach. They they posted on the stuff website and Tony Veach shared on Facebook. Yeah. and it was a. Um, a, a them then and a them now yeah, and, yeah. and the show Brendan McCullum when he was young but oh, Dan Vittori was yeah. 17 years old when he when he began playing international cricket almost 20 um, years professional cricket a good math there mate it's really insane. good math yeah, they, they said <laughs> hey, they, <laughs> don't buy him the calculator oh. for Christmas <laughs> I, heard, I heard a reference the other day that uh, Dan Vittori spent more than half of his life in the black caps yeah I mean, that's that, crazy oh, man cool. Even right. a guy like Kyle Mills, who I've never rated overly, but he, I mean he's been in that he's been in the makeup of the Black Caps now for what, twelve, thirteen years. Yeah. It's crazy, you know. The, and and I think that level of experience, the the cool headness, yeah, you know, it's starting to come to play with this Black Cap team, especially when you're being led by an incredible captain. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. think something in the mentality of this change, this team has changed. Yeah, and uh, New Zealand cricket mentality is, is over the last few years has not become been a there. professional sport. Yeah, it's become whole, like a completely professional, professional you know, uh, sport. These guys are athletes now. You know, the team's always performed as a professional. Yeah, like like the, the they've always been. One thing you can't say about the Black Caps was that they were ever a lazy training squad. No. they've always been very, very, very active when yeah. it came to their training and their fitness and stuff. Yeah, I think the difference is is because you got some guys with some world class ability that in turn increases the the level of. Um, uh, attitude, the level of confidence yeah. that these guys have behind them, and that's why you, we're seeing the team that we do now. Uh, You've got a team who's very, very um, um, led very, very well, and the team know that they're being led well. They know that yeah. there's a leader there. That's right. I think Mike Hesson's got a lot to do with that. I think Mike Hesson yep, has, um, sure. has changed the attitude in the team. He's, he's put some systems in place that I think they were missing yep. throughout the uh, the John Wright, Mark Grapebatch, Andy Moles yeah, um, yeah. Um, Experiment over the five years leading into That's it. That's right. And for a guy who didn't play first class cricket, or, or, or I'm not even too sure what level of cricket Mike Hesson played, he understands the game. Um, and it's good to be able to have a guy like McCullum alongside him, who really is a, a superstar of, of the sport in the world. Yeah. Um, no matter where you go, I mean, the Australians are talking about after last week's game in the, in the Sydney Morning Herald, you know, how they wish Brendan McCullum was an Aussie. Yeah, you know? I that one. That's, that's a good one. Oh. Yeah, you know, and so um, they can't take him, but. But what's interesting is that, you know, you're talking about Dan Vittori there and his contributions to the team. It wasn't that long ago, and it shows how far this team has come that. Dan Vittori was literally player, coach, captain, yeah. and selector. Selector, yeah. You know, all in all in the one sort of... Pretty much. Um, and was you know, saving us at the end of matches. He was like the well. GM of, of New Zealand cricket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you pick the guy, you know? And um, <coughs> World Cup time, cool heads. You know, same reason I'd pick Richie McCaw over like Sam Kane or something. I yeah. think they were a little bit unsure with um, Vittori about how his body would hold up his... Um, he had missed over the last three years a large he's, chunk yeah. of cricket. Um, and he's, he's from time to time missed out kind of entire seasons or like yeah, yep. shut, shut down particular forms of the game it's to, kind to of make a sure his body's of okay. New Zealand cricket that we overplay our guys. McCullum yeah, said in the press season. conference the other day that when he was asked about Vittori, Vittori hadn't played hardly any cricket over the last three years uh, for the Black Caps. He played very, very few first class games. Yeah. He played a whole bunch of handful of um, IPL and Big Bash League cricket. Yeah. So, mm. I mean, yeah. Vittori, for me, is, is one of those guys where you can't discount class. He'll always have it with him. Yeah. And because bowling is more of a, um, a less... Comp- um, how do I explain this? A less combative um, a, um, position in the team where we're, we're batting. You, you, you're being dictated on what you're being thrown at you at the time, and you have to react a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes even classy batsmen will have really really poor periods where they're not seeing the ball quite well for a bowl yeah and so for a bowler particularly a a spin bowler who who judges you know flight and guile and where he he places the ball and things for a guy like him 
it's a lot easier for him to come back in that makeup if he's feeling fit yeah. and if he's yeah. feeling confident yeah. and all that sort of thing. One of the things where he'll probably always have it. Like he'll be fifty and he'll yeah. still have like still incredible chuck control. I'll yeah. be like Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll be like Jordan. And he can still dunk. Well, I, saw, I was watching Jordan having shoot around on YouTube the other day from about three months ago. Still got it. But he, he, I think in what. Um, he uh, was playing around the world with Carmelo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. Well, nah. But, <laughs> nah. But you would no, expect the current nah, NBA Jordan, Jordan's lost it, bro. Sorry. To, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but, but, you know, he, he, it's guys like that, you, you eternally have class. Yeah, and yeah, they, yeah. You, you can't take that away. I'll tell you what, just... Um, sorry, JB. Just on class, I've been enjoying watching this uh, Shinwari guy from Afghanistan who just brought up his yeah. 50. Just after launching a six into the stands off, uh, not a particularly quick fifty. Off Corey, yeah, not off a like particularly quick one. Balls. Yeah, I think we're up there, and um, he's, he's just launched Corey Anderson into the, the stands for a six and beautiful cover drive on Trent Bolt through uh, for a four runs to bring up his fifty. Now, considering Afghanistan were uh, what were they six for fifty four? Yeah, fifty four for six. However you want to say it. Yeah. And now uh, this is good. It's, it's, it's showing a bit of backbone. And have they got I some like death it. bowlers they can bring in? Afghanistan, but, you know, ha- Af- Afghanistan haven't been playing like. Um, uh, like some of the other um, associate teams, though they've, I mean, they 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 were scoring some runs and playing well against. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, one of their bowlers, I I can't remember that. It was the guy who was last at bat who got out, um, who was terrible. Um, but <laughs> his his bowling through this World Cup's been quite impressive. Um, I've watched a, a bit of him, and he's sort of, uh, you know, he's world class. But I just think yep. they struggle to make a, a team out of those sorts of guys. Um, yeah, is it a concern that we couldn't close this out at 6 for 54 or, or whatever? But that Napier pitch is very flat. It's actually, uh, here's a bit of a stat, it's the highest scoring... Well, it's the best batting surface in the country. In the world. I'm sure the... Um, it's, it's the uh, highest scoring ground in the world on average. 307 runs for the first innings team each time. So I think you'll be happy that at the 40, what, 45 over mark yeah, here, yeah, restricted they, they've somewhere. got half that. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it's not a, it's not a bad effort. I think... Depending on how the black caps go about this, run rate's not an issue anymore. I think they just got to go out there, um, play the shots, and I think I think for guys like um, Taylor, yeah. they need to get themselves back into a bit of form and Guptill mm. as well. Yeah, use it as a tune-up match for a lot of them. I think it's good they've put a few runs on there. I, I would have if, if it, guess Afghanistan had been rolled for seventy-five here, yeah. I would have been a it's bit. It's in the interest you know, of the tournament and cool yeah, world absolutely. cricket that they are competitive. Absolutely, yes, right. It looks like they they may get up to a little over two hundred potentially if they, if they keep batting well. They'll be at 12 and over if they do that. One, one of the teams... at the crease, mate. It's possible, I tell you. True, eh? True. One of the teams that have been really impressing me has been the Indian team, particularly that behind the leadership of Virat Kohli. That's right. They're playing some really, really good cricket at the moment, and th- we can't discount them. I think they're going to have to be a team we're going to have to really watch out for come semi-final, final time. Yeah, absolutely. Was that all we had? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. All right, then. Well, you know, there's, there's like a resurgence in, <laughs> in the team and their form, and you know, it seems like the whole attitude of the team is starting to um, to pick up, and they're, they're being that world-class one-day team. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it surprising. Um, for me, I thought, you know, if, if you'd asked me pre- prior to the World Cup starting who's going to win, my, it would have been, for me, South Africa, India, Australia, or New Zealand, probably in that order as well. You just named half the half the, half yeah. of the <laughs> test playing nations there. In, in that order, though, in that order for me. You would have India as a favourite over New Zealand leading into the World Cup. Yeah, I, I, I would have. How come? Yeah. Um, just something about the professionalism of that Indian team. I mean, I love New Zealand. Don't get me wrong, and the heart wants them to win, man. And I think they can do it. The belief's there. But um, it that, sound that, like that it. Indian it sounds like you believe India can do it. I do believe India could do it as well. I just don't want oh, them to. Yeah. <laughs> I, the Indians never even figured into my process. Uh, leading into the leading into this cricket World Cup, I thought they'd be very very about to come semi final time, but I don't think they've got the nous to take it out. I don't think I don't think they've got the they don't have the bowling attack. They don't have the what they do have is they have a very very good crew of batters which have that, been that's able, right which, which have been playing well in Australia at the moment. Yeah, but if you get them over here. Yep, agreed. It becomes a completely different story, and, that, and, and they are a bit thin on that uh, well bowling they, attack. You know, yeah. there was a near collapse against the Windies. What was it, one eighty-five for six? That's not. Oh, you know, the, the, it's I, not I couldn't. I couldn't, I couldn't believe the Windies almost got were able to put themselves yeah. into a position where they could win that Potentially, game. Potentially, yeah. Is that, you know, getting bowled out for one eighty-two, and then um, they come back and restrict India to what almost took them forty overs. So, so I think it's a great thing that we're even having this discussion. The fact that there is five or six teams. You know that are, are contenders for this title of the the World Cup, or, or because in previous years it's pretty pretty obvious um, who's going to take it out. Um, even you know Pakistan up over uh, South Africa uh, yesterday was it, and uh, or the day before. 
there yeah, um, so that's great for the tournament man and I think it, it is it's a, it's a healthy conversation that you know there are four, four to six serious contenders to take out the ICC Cricket World Cup this I year. think there's four I don't know about the six I don't know if I put Pakistan or I put um, who's your fifth team you maybe, put in there? maybe look I just think you know someone like Sri Lanka could freak a couple of games and that's all you need to do to win the tournament well that's going to bring us into the next point which is going to be an example to see exactly where Sri Lanka are at this afternoon when, this afternoon when they take on Australia at the SCG yep. um, go the Sri Lanka the Aussies are looking very very good at the moment though and it's and it's it's almost a little bit scary. And I think after last Saturday, they got they're the team that came out yeah. of that game with the most confidence. The yep. fact that they were able to run the Kiwi batsmen down and almost bowl them out with such a modest total, That's right. they came out of it feeling pretty confident. Yep. The Black Caps would have too. The fact that they were able to do the same thing in the first innings. Yep. However, this Australian team's a little bit of a worry for me and Oh, they're they're class, man. Um they're absolutely class, especially that bowling attack is just ruthless and if they get going up the top of the order, um, you know, it's it's that's what I mean anyone on their day but uh, what we're looking at now is Shinwari just after my big hype up of him skied one in the air and he's gone so uh, <laughs> Afghanistan nine down just keep talking them up bit of entertainment he's out 54 I think it was Corey Anderson got that wicket who are you picking Australia or Sri Lanka oh let's go Sri Lanka eh? come on give him some support man JB uh, I would say Australia at home mate all right then and so one of the other discussion points that's come up here has been the batting performance of the team so far however how is the impact on the new on the on the cricket bats and also the use of the second new ball impacting that now jb this is something you've been thinking about well yeah um i was watching a feature on online and um uh, one of the best bat bat makers in australia he came out and said that you know bats are bats are getting much much bigger also they're drying them for a longer period of time so they're getting much lighter as well as being bigger so naturally you know it's all physics that's that's going to translate through the ball and when you're using two new balls per innings it means that at the death you know you're not trying to hit a rubbery piece of leather over the fence just has has huge implications i'll tell you what man that that like excites me because yeah. I used to play a lot of cricket when I was young, yeah. and I used to play at representative sort of level and stuff like that. And humble brag, humble brag, yeah, humble brag. Sorry, just throwing it in. All right, laying it down there. And uh, so Dan, what's <laughs> North Shore, <laughs> North Shore under sevens. <laughs> <laughs> you got midgets, midgets under fourteens. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but uh, the thing was, is I, I I look at these bats, you know, I was I was I was, I was um. I was always more batting, batting inclined, and I look at the technology that's come in these days, and I see some of these guys hitting the ball with these bats, and they're light, they're big, they yeah. hit the ball hard, and just think of the damage that you could have done. And you hear quite a lot of the old uh, sort of commentators referring into it time and time again. They sort of sit there and, and say, man, I wish I had one of these bats in my hand back in the day. And, yeah, that's right. You know. It's the same thing that's happening in tennis as well. Um, and, and oh, it's happening in every sport. Yeah, that's right, baseball yeah. kind of clamped down on it a few years ago where... They went, all right, it's kind of getting ridiculous now. And they said, your, your baseball bat has to be made out of this wood. It has to be made this way. Yeah. And if it's not, you can't use it. And that See, way, it kind of kept everything fair and kind of old school. Where yeah. this, isn't, this, is, this, isn't, this isn't a story about being fair because all the teams have the opportunity to use the same bats and the same balls. So fairness doesn't come into it. What it That's comes true. down to, it comes down to the entertainment dollar. Yeah. And so these sports are constantly looking for ways to make the sport more entertaining, to break more records, yeah. to score more runs, whether it be um, in cricket or softball or baseball or whether yeah. or not it is to being able to make the ball go further so guys can kick goals from further distances or, yeah. or kick find touch finders mm-hmm. from further mm-hmm. distances like passes, it's more yeah exactly it's more about entertainment than, than being fair or people having the advantage of having um, access to certain tools that other people don't now an example will be this this issue that um, Nike are having at the moment with the Tiger Woods ball yeah. that they've that Tiger Woods basically what they're saying is that the ball that Tiger Woods um, had developed for him by Nike was actually an illegal ball and oh, wow. he's been using that for the last 10 to 15 years wow have, have, have none of you heard this I've only heard this yeah, yeah this so this came out on this came out on Tuesday during the week and, and the conversation was that well can you take is, is this is this Lance Armstrong all over again <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that sort of thing you know so um, wow. t- I mean t- I mean, Nike have been have been asked a few questions, and I what, think what was exactly illegal about it? Uh, you, know, I'm, I'm, you think they'd have some sort of rubber scru- bands scrutineering or something it, going on? No, or? it was something about the way it was developed. Uh, let me just have a quick look up and and, and double check exactly what well, it was. On that, with that. I'll, I'll extend on that. There was um, back in the day, I used to play a bit of field hockey as well. Rip, oh, rip, you're rip, like um, an all rounder, mate. Rip, so, you? you know, I mean, it's not a particularly uh, manly thuggish sport, but. Um, <laughs> It is if you're on ice. <laughs> well, I played a lot of ice hockey as well. I, I sort of grew up playing ice hockey. There you go. <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't do that well in school, um, but I did really well in sports. So, 
<laughs> Matt <laughs> that's, Groves, that's, everybody. That's where my energy went, you know. But um, what was interesting was is when I was playing hockey, uh, a company called Talon came out with a uh, new stick that was um, a titanium composite, blah, 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 one of those sorts of things, right? And this thing was pretty much like hitting a hockey ball with just like a piece of titanium. And it was just, it was titanium wrapped in carbon fiber. And this thing would just yeah. kill the ball, man. Like you were going to hurt some people. So after a season of using that, they quickly outlawed it. And some of the international guys were just hitting the ball. It still hit it harder they, than um, any stick today. They still make Talon, the, the Talon yep. TH9. That's right. So that was outlawed in, in most... Um, very precise there, thanks, JB. The I used yeah. to watch a lot of... No, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> European professional. It's one of those things where you've, you've got to weigh up. Uh, I understand the whole entertainment value, especially in cricket now with the amount of money it's raking in. But yeah, man. I, I've always been a big thing of you want to try keep the sport as close to as it used to be as possible for record's Pure, like sake. Yeah, I like that. I like like that. with the three point mm. shootout, how they changed it this year. It's like, That's right. You've ruined all the record books, no longer count. Yeah, it's you've starts changed everything from this year, effectively. And it's like, you can you can change about obviously technology is always going to evolve bats are always going to get better there's always going to be something yep. but it's like you've got to draw a line somewhere where you go it can only be this big it can only be this light you can only and it can only this have long. this big of a sweet spot yeah. but otherwise you know, it's just but, getting ridiculous but you know what at the same level though athletes have developed in a more athletic and more agile and faster right. and stronger oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. and all that sort of thing than what used to be and it's always going to happen so it's just like with motorsport too yeah. the mm-hmm. development yeah. of, of, of and Matt will be able to chime in here yeah. the development of, of, of technology and, and, and computerized engineering and all sorts of stuff yeah. you yeah, know absolutely. down to the fuel down to everything down to the, the equipment they use in the, down to the equipment they use in the pit lane and that for everything you know it's, it's, it's all changing and I think we have to be um, I think pu- people who are purists of sports um, are arrogant especially in things like cricket and golf and um, you gave a good example to uh, baseball is actually a, an example of, of arrogance and uh, those purists and I think you got to realize if you're looking at it from a, as a sporting fan, you want to be entertained. We we watch yeah. sport because we want to be entertained. We don't watch sport because we're interested in exactly how the guy's going to get his bind on when he, when they go into to, to hit in the scrum, things like this. Actually, actually, actually <laughs> I, I do. You probably actually, do. I do. Actually, <laughs> you're looking I, for that bo- that I, tight I, bind. I like then? the I like to break it down. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think I think arrogance is a tough word. I get what you're saying, yeah. and I think there's sort of two golf purists aren't arrogant. I think I think there's kind of two kind of purists. Um, like I'd like to think of myself as as a bit of a purist. Um, when with with things like cricket and and rugby and stuff, but it's more the romance of it. You like T20, you know, um, I love it. You're but not a purist. Not a, you're oh, not yeah. a purist. No, 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 no. no. Uh, I can still appreciate a good five-day test match, you know? Yeah. And well, a purist um, would be like, it's only five days or one day. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Like A purist is like, there's not even one day cricket. True that, yeah. You, so you, I'm more like the romance of the history of the game and the, the, the stuff like that, you know? If you go for a tour through to the, um, uh, the MCC section at the, um, the MCG, yeah. the members area, yeah. they fucking... They cannot stand one day international cricket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They do not even. They, they don't even promote any of the any of the records or anything in there. It's all about test cricket. Um, and golf purists are some of the most arrogant people ever. I mean, a good segue is into a topic which Nathan's been talking about this week to us, and that has been the um, the the older clubs finally allowing That's female right. members after yeah. what a hundred years. And it's it's not like all of them. It's a couple of them are yeah, doing it. Yeah, like, few people got wound up about finally it well. allowing it. And it's and it's like big. It's big news on ESPN and this sort yeah, of thing yeah. because. I mean, because originally golf was it was a gentleman's sport, and Indeed. St Andrews, which is like the original golf course, I'm not sure if it's one of the courses that have changed its uh, stance on it. But as recently as last year, it was still no female members. Yeah, I think because they they sort of did like a referendum um, in 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 and around the area of St Andrews, and yeah. I'm sure don't quote me on this, but it came back like 80 percent of even people that weren't golf members said no, no females in St Andrews. And I was like, that's pretty tough, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, p- they want to just uphold that tradition so much that they don't want to kind of make any changes. I'm a fan of tradition, I don't know if it's man, just about the tradition, you know. There's, there's probably more at play here, you know, given the given the um, demographic that you're dealing They're with. They're afraid oh, yeah, Lydia no, yeah. just going to come over percenters, you know, so. Clean them all up, you know. Yeah. Go Lydia. Woohoo. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's, it's a weird thing that, you know, we're, we're living in 2014 and, and stuff like that's still like I don't know no woman should be allowed to do this well it's like it's in the world of I find sports, it weird in the world of sports it's not that weird no um, I guess not you know sports has always had, had a division yeah <coughs> are, you guys, are you guys big baseball fans just quickly oh, not, I'll watch it not so much I, I don't days. follow it massively but I, I enjoy watching baseball I got, my bl- I got my Blue Jays shirt on how do you feel about the A-Rod situation I don't even know what's going on man I'm like well, mate, I'll watch it but I don't follow it I mean, uh, in terms of steroids, 
or in, in terms of the 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 battle going on with him and and the Yankees. Oh, that's what's weird. latest. It's kind of like. I don't know. I, I've always found. Made a second appearance. I bring it up because April six opening day coming up. It's you know it's a it's a major milestone in the in, or, or sorry major calendar point in the um, sporting year for the Americans. Yeah, it's I don't know. I, I find I would not like as much as I don't like a Rod at all. I think he's like the biggest douche in history. But I wouldn't <laughs> like to see him play for anyone. In else. History I think or I think bigger than be, bigger than Hitler. Come on, dude. <laughs> I, I wouldn't like him. As, I mean, I know he hasn't played for the Yankees his whole career, obviously, but. <laughs> I wouldn't like to see him play for someone else at this point. I'd like to rather, I'd rather watch him retire. What about him to Mark McGuire, just quickly? Well, well, Mark uh, McGuire, the, the Colorado guy, had the big bat, smashed all the home runs. Took a whole bunch of roids. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't <laughs> know. Put a bit of cork the in whole baseball steroid thing is pretty impossible to keep up with. Let's talk about Barry Bonds. Let's get into all of these guys yeah. who, 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 who I think use the PEDs to get that unfair advantage, you know, and you want to talk about being purist in sport and that sort of thing. That's the, I think that's the, that's the biggest thing that you can, you can do is, is by enhancing your bodily, body illegally mm. yeah. to be able to be a better player. Yeah. Um, Put an asterisk next to the name on everything. That's right. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lance Armstrong. So well, so yeah, yeah. So Lance Armstrong's probably, I mean, he was... <laughs> He his, his his approach was just deny 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 until the day he got caught. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And make money off books <laughs> and stuff. Come clean. Go do Oprah. Make money that way. The worst part about him, he hasn't apologized for what he's done. He's only apologized for for basically the situation. Which, yeah. if you translate, it means that he apologizes for getting caught. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, from what I've heard, I don't agree with what he did at all. But, you like you say, he apologizes for the situation. So he's in a situation where sort of the top 15 guys in his sport are all juiced up and they're all having to compete. So just that hang, wasn't, on, just hang on. That wasn't the case. Just hang on. Well, he seems to think it was and so do a lot of other people. Um, but in which case, let's say the top 10 guys you're, you're trying to compete with are all on the juice and it's common practice and it's accepted in the sport. Would you do it? No. I don't know, depends how much you want to win. That's, I mean, that's depend, sort of depend, not not so much how much you want to win. I'd like, I'd like to think on a moral level, I'd hit, sit here and say, no, nah, I wouldn't do it. I dispute. I dispute the fact that the top fifteen guys. And what, what? Here's the thing: Lance Armstrong's a liar, and he's been proven to be a liar. Yeah. Yeah. He lied for over a, over over twelve, fifteen years about taking the about taking whatever he was taking. Yeah. I feel I like the guy for the fact that he, he fought cancer. He beat cancer. He yep. went. He came back and he lived his life and that sort of thing. Married Cheryl Crow. But yeah, married. well done. <laughs> but the guy's a liar. And anything he says on television should be held with the, should be taken with a grain of salt. Yeah, definitely. Because of that, because of that fact. Yeah, and no, I thought that too. But then when a bunch of guys all came out and also said, "Oh yeah, hey, we'll admit to this." I don't know the names and the you know I just remember the surrounding. There was a lot of admission. So M- stands all out. So MB- yes, yeah, so, yeah. So NBC ran a. A, a documentary I think it was about six months ago and it was on Lance Armstrong and they and part of and in, in the section I remember watching it and they talked about um, who uh, what was it it was something along the lines of the, the top guys that have been caught and the people around them that have been caught and, and what it tended to be was you had about three three top riders from three different teams and then you'd have probably two or three other guys around them that were also taking the juice with them and all that sort of thing yep. Yep. I think it's pretty harsh to say that top, top 15 or guys around his period or, or, or up to that time were on the juice because these guys get tested regularly yes. mm-hmm. you know and particularly in the last five, six years the ones that have, have been caught have been caught because they proved positive for these things whether it was out of competition or in competition it's like UFC it's the same sort of thing Guys are getting caught doing this sort of stuff. Yep. So without the evidence that they've done that, they've done it, or well, without the blood, like the blood test coming back showing that they've positively yep. taken PEDs to uh, enhance their performance, uh, man. When it comes to a guy like Lance Armstrong, this is Lance Armstrong justifying the wrong that he did, and Lance Armstrong trying to, a spin to, to on it. yeah, trying to put a spin on it yeah. to make his situation seem no different to yeah. other top guys he's out like, there. What he's would you have done? Yeah, he's trying to make himself not look like the bad yeah. guy and trying to say, well, well I have no choice. Do. I think he could have projected his um, his situation a little oh, bit his, better. His like, PR team could have done a lot yeah, better oh, job. Absolutely. Sure. Just, it, like Dan said, he's just coming across trying to justify the actions. Yeah. But hey, if he put his hand up and said, yep, look, I'll man up, I did wrong, blah, 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 blah. But this was the situation. But that didn't even come across like that. What it's come across was, is, hey, you know, I'm not really even going to say sorry because this was the situation of the sport. And I'm not sorry for what I did because of the, um, the, the culture and the environment. Yeah. 
And I still think you're doing wrong because you know you're taking illegal substance and you've got to say sorry for it. You've got to man up. Well, he also said he'd take PIDs again. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he yeah. did too. So, yeah. you know, that's not remorse at all. No, there's no, not, a, not an ounce of remorse. And, no. You know, had he stood up and said sorry, you know. What I did was wrong. I regret taking it. I regret lying to the people, the fans, yeah. the I, sponsors. I betrayed yeah. everyone. You know, and, and you got to remember, this was... this. Cycling is a multi-million dollar sport for some athletes. That's right. And it was for Lance Armstrong. You think, if he had, been, if he, if he had not been the athlete that he was, you think people would have cared that he got cancer? No. He's one of thousands of elite sport athletes over the last 20 years who have had, who have had some form of cancer or some form yeah. of debilitating disease. Yeah. What mattered was that he was at the top of his sport, he was the man, and then he was able to beat the cancer. And yeah. you know what? God bless you. Well done. Yeah. But... He but. came back, and it was all about money. It was all about book sales. It was yep. all about this that's and right. all about that. And he and that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. It comes down to mu- to money. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine Pete Sampras taking PEDs and then turning around and saying, "Well, Agassi's taking it." Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. and, and these sorts of Throwing things. You know? other people under the bus. So, what would be more admirable would be at the time of, you know, it's easy hindsight twenty twenty and all that to stand up and say, "Hey, guys." There is an issue in this sport. I'm going to come speak up against it. He needs a contact. This needs to be addressed. He needs a contact John Jones's PR team, and John <laughs> Jones's PR team will sort that out. Because you take a look at this guy; he's the world champion in his division in UFC fighting. He is the po- well, not the poster boy, but he is the most well-known fighter in the world today. Definitely, and, and he needed to contact that guy 20 years ago. Or and it was, 15 the guy, the guy, gets, the guy gets caught with cocaine in his system, mate. Day one, he's there. He, he's, he comes straight out of the gate, and he's like, "I did wrong. I'm an idiot. Yeah. You know, I was partying, or this and that, that, whatever it was. Yeah. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry to the fans. I'm sorry to the. To, to the you just got to own I'm it. Sorry to. I'm sorry to people that run UFC. He he, he took it. You know. Yeah. It's like when you're a kid, when you're a child, and your dad says, "Yeah, did you eat the da 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 da?" Yeah. And you say no, but you know you did. Yeah. You're going to get in trouble. You're going to push your dad off more because you lied to him. Because you lied to him. But if you're honest with your dad, you can say, "Yeah, dad, I'm sorry." I it's easier was to ask for forgiveness than permission, you know? Yeah. That's the one. And, yeah. that, and that was the big thing with him. And now John Jones is like mostly all forgiven and he's just become a joke now. Like, it's just, he, oh, no, there's he, a lot of cocaine he jokes. Elevated like, his status. Yeah. No, no, I, mean, I don't mean he's a joke. As in like, there's just a lot of jokes. You want to tell John Jones he's a joke? He'd become the butt oh, of I'll, a I'll joke. Him out. Yeah. Bring it on. It's a sporting lockdown Sunday afternoon. We're chilling out at the tap room, 74 Wyndham Street in the city. We've got a lot of good stuff going on today in the sporting world. I'm just watching some basketball highlights and of the Phoenix Suns versus the Cavs. Cavs up over the Suns at the moment. Going to go to second in the East with this win, hopefully. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Going Wins to big, up. Man. How's, the, how's the streak going with the Magic? How's the Magic streak? Uh, so we had 119-110 over uh, someone else the other day. But uh, <laughs> <Yep. Magic laughs> you know, there, was, there was a there was a drop off there. there was a, the, the streak went cold for about three games, but we're back on a two. The game streak's game back. Now. The streak the went streak's cold, back. but it's it's back active it's back, again now. You know. It's so back. one of the discussions which we really need to get into, and we have it every Sorry, single just, week. Just quickly, Dan. Uh, five minutes. We got the Breakers tipping off against the ty- Taipans for the uh, NBL title. Yep. 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 So let's just uh, holler out before the game and say go Breakers and send the positive the positive thoughts out there. Go Breakers, continue to play. Go Taipans. Oh. <laughs> go Taipans. Oh. No, go Breakers, go Taipans, have a great game. Yeah. Continue playing that boring basketball that we have Sport to watch. will be the winner on, on the day. Come on. NBA um, rejects. So one of the, the things we need to talk about, and we talk yeah. about it every single week, but it, yeah. the, the story develops every so single week and gets better and better and better and better and better, and it is the MVP race at the moment. And oh, I tell you, it's heating up. And over the last seven days, we have seen some real, some really movement. juicy, some yeah. real movement, some real development. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say you can discount any chance of LeBron James winning the MVP title this year. Absolutely. Yeah. Really? I'd say I'd say so. I would um, say absolutely. Yeah. Two Just games enough. Unless he comes out and triple doubles half the games left in the season, then he's nowhere near. Which oh. I'll tell you what, um, just on, on the triple doubles, interesting stat that sort of, you know, we're, we're having the, the, the conversation about Russell Westbrook, could he be an MVP this year when yep. he sort of missed half of the season effectively, whatever, and we sort of said, you know, oh, it's, it's going to be tough for him, but... He's come out and made four triple doubles in his last four appearances. He's the only player to do that since 1994, Michael Jordan. That that's got to be knocking on the door, man. You know, I'm not even the biggest Westbrook fan, but that is uh, that's knocking on the door of you know making up for a half a season. I, that's I still don't impressive. think I still don't think you can overcome the fact that at the end of the day he's going to be an eight seed. I don't think you can get him, give an MVP to an eight seed, no matter how well they're playing. But the discussion has to change, though, at some point. Now, you talk about being purist basketball fans and all that sort of thing. 
no one has ever won the MVP title from the eighth seed. Yeah. No one has ever won the MVP title out of the top three seeds. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. So, but the discussion is, really, if you are a top player and you are playing the best to do, and you are the best player in the league at the moment, yeah. and you are propelling your team into the eight yeah. because of how you're playing, does that not that's matter more I, than, yeah. being, than being a, 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 a one or two seed? Most valuable player well, then gets it? Like, so, That's how I'd like to look know. at it as well. I get the seeding and stuff like that, but let's be honest, is OKC at their top strength really an eight seed team? If Westbrook so. is ever going to win it, this is the season to win it from that's the eight right. seed. Yeah. Because like we discussed last week, people are sick of talking to talking about LeBron James. The journalists who vote for the MVP are sick of talking about yeah. LeBron James. Yeah. That's been pretty made, uh, made pretty clear. If you, if you read enough blo- NBA blogs online... All of these guys are saying, hey, word is that the journalists don't want to vote for LeBron That's James. Right. They want somebody new. They want somebody different. There's almost a movement. Mm. So it becomes then a race between Curry and Westbrook. And Westbrook and Harden. is probably paying. Yeah, but you know, mm. even then. Not for me. So I was listening to, the, I was listening to um, the Fox Sports Radio this morning. And even they were saying, the problem that you've got with James Harden is no one likes James Harden. No, yeah. and, he's, and, he's and he's not fun to watch. And, and, funda- and whilst, whilst he's an exciting player at times, fundamentally he is sound. He yep. isn't a guy that inspires the team. He's not a guy that really gets, gets you moving. And he's also got, from what has been said out there, he's yep. not that well liked amongst the media. No. Mm. So it then becomes Curry versus Westbrook. Curry's got to be the head. He's got to be the, the favourite at the moment to, yeah. to win it, particularly if 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 if, if, if GSW can, can 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 hold one of those top three seeds, That's right. yeah. which they should. Yeah, but there's got to be a case put forward to the fact that Russell Westbrook is playing the best basketball in his career, and he's playing the best basketball in the entire NBA at the moment. Well, funnily enough, this matchup, Curry versus um, sorry versus Westbrook, is actually mimicking the current standings. So you know, it's eight versus one, and it's Curry versus Westbrook. So yeah, first round of playoffs will yeah, probably huge, be them. Huge matchup. Um, you know, for me, I'm not a Curry fan, but I I acknowledge what he's done this season, and I, I would give it to Curry at this stage. LeBron was still in the race a week ago, but when yeah. you've got a player, who's supposed to be the greatest player in the league or the greatest player of our generation, yeah. and he misses, and he gets the clutch time, and he misses two free throws. Yeah, yeah and then he performs like crap and then the following next game. game and yeah fair enough it is only two games yeah however this is what people look for they look for consistency they look for the yeah. top players to shine when they need it to clutch clutch plays yeah. that's what makes players great that's right you know Did well, because, you know last night's game that he yeah terrible turnovers that was Cavs versus Hawks yeah. so how many what nine turnovers nine, nine turnovers, yeah. nine turnovers. Yeah. Mm. and shooting shooting averagely from the field but um you know, it, it, in games like this and um, the previous game, it definitely is on LeBron's shoulders because he performed the worst on the entire court. So I think one thing LeBron has going for him is Cleveland came out of the gate pretty average this year, and now they're going to climb up to probably end up being the two seed, which I think is something that kind of boasts well for him. Is he's obviously the best player on that team. That's right, and like JB said, uh, you know, when LeBron was out, there was a serious. Yeah, yeah, they they did awful. Yeah. On that team, so you know. what nine from ten losses? I, yeah. I would have to give it at this point. I think Curry, for me, is hands down. Um, basically, because, yeah, the best two players... J- James Harden's not even in the conversation when Curry's involved not at in all. That's uh, the problem I, I have with James Harden. He had Harden. a triple-double the other day, which is... Which but he is, is, he is in, in, in all the media, you know, and I don't like is, how he always ends up on the ground. Of, the re- yeah. I'll, tell, I'll, tell, I'll tell you my perspective you know. on why the commentators and why the media are talking about him. Because they need more than two players to talk yeah, about. Because he's new. That, well, he's well, not... You know, but he's not, he's not new, but in the MVP race thing, he's a new player that they can talk about. Otherwise, they run out of things to talk about. You can only talk about Steph Curry and you can only talk about Russell Westbrook's um, triple double streak for so, for so, long, for so long, long and that yeah. sort of thing I also so. think it feels a fire that he's a bit of a heel you know um, and the, and, and the, <laughs> compared of, to Curry bit, who yeah, is like the know, baby like, face of the entire everyone league everyone loves Steph and Curry yeah. you know and, and James Harden he's just you know he's uh, he doesn't even like himself sometimes, you think, when he's having an interview with himself, you know? And <laughs> he's just sort of like... I can see why. I saw an interview the other day, and I, I can't remember who it was with, but he said, oh, you might as well put my name on the trophy now. I've won it. I'm, I'm the best there is. And he's yeah. like, I'm scoring 35 points a game. What's better than that? And, you know, my answer is going like... Going deep in the playoffs? Going deep in the playoffs, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And how about... Defensive a, plays? An all-round, <laughs> all-rounded player. And this is why, this is why like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Steph Curry fan. Yeah, not a huge fanboy, but more so than um, more so than Westbrook or, or, or Harden. And for me, Westbrook is just so much more of an all-round player than Steph Curry. But Steph Curry is better at doing what he does that he's good at. If that, yep. Does that make any sense to anyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Like Curry specialises, whereas Westbrook is generically 
impeccable. He's, yeah, he's he's very good basketball player. Uh, I, I wouldn't say Curry is that much of a specialist because he's one of the best defensive point guards in the league. He rebounds pretty well. Yes, he's absolutely. averaging about five rounds. He's one of the best passers in the league. He's not just a great shooter. Like he's he's probably one of the best leading in terms of like pure point guard have you running seen, a team. Have you seen how pretty it is also when you watch him when he actually does drive into the lane? Oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's so pretty. He, I like how yeah. casual he is, you know, and he just sort of... Yeah. He's probably, for me, uh, him and Westbrook are the two most exciting players to watch at the moment. And I would put Curry slightly ahead of Westbrook because I like shooters. Sure, yeah. Uh, I think for me this year, Curry should get the MVP at this stage. But I think Westbrook is a better player than him. Oh, yeah. Westbrook's playing the best in the league. Right I don't now. think Westbrook's an all-round better player than Steph Curry. No, but I think he's cool. playing better basketball at the moment. Yep. I think Curry will win because he's a t- in a top seed team. And he is, he, is, he is leading the team well. And he's playing. He's the best player on that team as well. Curry is so consistent. That's, that's a big part of it, man. Yep, he's so right. consistent, you know. Yep. Um, he doesn't seem to ever have a really bad game. Yeah. No, no. You know, he, ten, he's, he, he gets his 7 to 10 assists. He... Yeah. he, 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 he Consistently, probably score. What was his average this year? Twenty three. Yeah, twenty three. Twenty three points. Twenty three, twenty four points a season. How many dimes and stuff? Eight, eight dimes. So eight and dimes. Like five that, man. Yeah. So he's a consistent player, and yeah. I think the problem that Westbrook's going to have is Westbrook has never been a consistent player. No, he, that's right. He's, and he still can end up looking like mud at the end of the season because yeah, yeah. there's a long way to go until mm. until playoff time. And to be honest, yeah. there's a a reasonable chance that Oklahoma City still might not make the playoffs. They're only a game ahead of New Orleans, right. and was, yeah. Anthony Davis is back and had a beast of a game. First anything back. can happen, eh? And the Suns yeah. are knocking on the door as well, even though they're yeah, three right. points behind. There's Cleveland two teams Atlanta. there that are yeah. one and a half yeah. games behind OKC for that last playoff spot. So, yeah. so, we, so we touched on before LeBron's effort last uh, was it last night. Yeah. Um, Cavs versus the Hawks. What yeah. more do the Hawks have to prove? <laughs> not much. Nothing. That they can win in the playoffs, really. Yeah. As but all, yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Can they go the whole way? Still this good when it matters. Yeah, but yeah, they are easily. It was the top it was a team playoff the East for years for yeah. me. It was a playoff game yesterday. It, it felt like it. It was pretty intense. Like the Hawks are pretty well known for being one of those kind of laid back, chilled out, Spursy type of teams, and they came out and like Corver when he was hitting threes was like running down the court screaming. What about that like, first quarter though? Wow, demolished the thirty six nineteen Hawks shooting at seventy one percent. Yeah, ridiculous. You know, That's so I mean that, that, that is a, sp- a replication <laughs> of that Spurs effort, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and yeah, it, was, yeah. it was interesting that they they played so well through the game when Corver was struggling because Corver is probably the most important player offensively on that team because he yeah, gives but so he, much he, space. he ran what zero zero for five until yeah. the five, fourth. That's right, and then he came back in the fourth and clean, basically shut the game off. He, he's uh, slipped right off that. With, everyone's been hyping up the 50 50 90 sure, season, yeah. and he's fallen off that now. He's had a pretty rough last month. So yeah, so has he fallen off that? I haven't kept he up has, with that. He has. He's now oh. he's forty eight percent from the field, um, and I think his three point has fallen back a bit as well. I mean, oh. there's still a month left, so if he if he goes yeah, well sure. from here on out, he I want to see him hit that there. man. Can he win? Can they win? Sorry, uh, they, I think they can win the East. The, the brand of basketball they can play, they win? Can they, they can win, win the NBA title this year? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. The passing ball. Who wins the NBA? It's Who? fundamental basketball. Yeah. I don't see why they couldn't. Yeah, that's, and that's my point exactly. Yeah, exactly. The East is not as strong as the West at the moment. Yeah. No. But they have looked very, very good against West against Western Conference right. teams. Um, Golden, I'm, Golden State still wins. I am going to. I am going to pick that they're not going to win. Yeah. I am going to pick. Um, my 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 pick uh, five weeks ago was for the Thunder to have a massive yes. comeback, yes. and I'm still going to back the Thunder to win nice. the win the NBA title. They're going to win it from the eighth seed, become the first team I think, and the winner from the eighth yep. in the West. So carry with like MVP cool, gets man. knocked out first round. I like it. Uh, you like it? You like, yeah, that, I like that? Like that drama? <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I still find because um, I've been looking at the kind of the matchups, um, and I still can't sit there and go. Who's gonna win? Yeah. I have no idea who's gonna. Even the first round, you're like, any of these teams could beat any of these teams. How awesome is that, though? It's Which is like, it's gonna be an incredible first couple of rounds of the, in the West. The East, you you sit there and you go, it's the top four the, teams. The are East probably is pretty through. standard. Like I yeah. think the yeah, status yeah. quo continues through. Yeah, that's right. But the West is so competitive; it's gonna yeah. be exciting. Um, Wesley Matthews, he's out. Ruptured Achilles. Yeah. Yep, awful. Sixteen points a game, like That's five rebounds, three a, assists. Yeah, those are useful. Well, those are useful numbers. Yeah. But um, what's his name? Aflalo is coming back now, isn't he? Yeah, he, he's a, they they picked him up on the trade deadline, which now yeah. turns out was a really lucky move because Very. they've now got a, a decent backup, backup who's yeah. pretty yep. experienced and is a good shooter. That's right, um, and it will slot in reasonably well to with with Matthews' role. Yep. Um, the 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 injury was freak. It was it was very Kobe esque, where it was he just yeah. did a move that you've done a million times, but he just kind of pushed off a bit weird and Pop. snapped. Mm, that's a nasty one to do as well. Then oh, his season really averages aren't Kobe esque though. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> just no, but <laughs> I'll just throw that in there. For that team, he's <laughs> shooting seven threes a game. Yeah, uh, which is like 
more than Corvus shooting. I think he's like one of the top volume guys for threes in the league, and that gives him so much spacing. And so you've got to hope a follow if a follow comes in, um, and that he can come in and do that same kind of role and just stand in the corner. I and think shoot. he can. Goran Dragic also left yesterday's game versus the Wizards with a back contusion. Return date is unclear at the stage. Yeah, that's, oh. yeah. That, that, that's a bit. That's a, that, I mean, particularly after everything happened with the trade, that's a, yeah. it's a massive loss for them. Big blow for the Heat, yeah, especially on the, the Bulls, man. You make those trades, eh, and then all of a sudden, bang, bang, and bang. And yeah, they're, oh. they're currently sitting in a nine spot, Miami. So like they they're, they're only with him gone, it makes it a lot harder, even in the East. Yeah. I don't I don't see the heat. I don't see the heat there no. anywhere in the playoffs. No, I, I, I don't see them making the eight. Well, if you're I'd looking like to see at them go first round, the, the, just, just so I could watch them get beaten. Just for nostalgia? Oh, just to <laughs> beat the heat? Yeah. <laughs> the, the problem is there's no heat on the heat because nah. LeBron's not there anymore. Right. <laughs> and, everybody, and Dwayne Wade is an exceptionally affable character. People like him. So. Yes, yeah. The East is wide open at the moment. For those bottom two playoff spots, uh, there's five teams within like two games of it. Charlotte, Indiana, Miami, Boston, and Brooklyn. Yeah. All mm-hmm. if, if they go on a three-game win streak, they'll be in the playoffs. Like... It's going to be really interesting. Once Orlando to watch. continue their streak, um, and yeah, Olive, yeah. Olive once Depot, they pick, pick the streak, Depot, Orlando need to win ten in a row. They've been to on be a break <laughs> from the streak. They're going to get back yeah, on that, it that, again. That's right. Then they'll be knocking on the door. And if once Orlando, Olive Depot gets back into the if Orlando win ninety percent of their games <laughs> from here on out, they might make the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Allen was suspended for one for one game for a physical altercation with Nick Kalathis. Yeah, team point suspension. guard. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, what, what's the word with that one? Um, it was what what initially came out because um, I haven't actually heard that it was a physical altercation, but I heard yesterday it came out that he had just been suspended for conduct detrimental to the team. Yeah, that's right. Um, typical kind of generic. He did something bad, so we're we're sitting him down for a game. But um, yeah, that's not good. You you didn't even want to see that with him. Especially, um, I mean, Memphis is currently the, the two seed, so you don't want right. to see mm. something this happening the wrong in the locker of the room. Yeah, for that sort of stuff. So hopefully, it was kind of one of those just heat of the moment in a just practice. Something boiled yeah. over, something unrelated. Just traffic like, on the way like to kept practice. It the fists and he, he wasn't packing any heat in his locker there and. <laughs> yeah. Come out with his gat, you know. Wow, sleeping racism. <laughs> is that what I heard? Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> yeah. he, he was suspended for 20 games last year, that wasn't was he? For the, right. yeah. um, uh, the, the the doping issue, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Calathus. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah last last season. Who, so. wh- who was it that kept his, his, kept his gun in his locker? Gilbert Arenas. That's yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one I was trying to. Yeah. <laughs> so NBA, lots of big ma- uh, lots of big matchups coming up over the next uh, little bit. Houston at Portland. Yep. Houston at Clippers. Playoff matchup. Probably. I don't say at LA because there is only one LA team. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Which one's in the, the LA B team? The LA C. What, what, what about Portland guys? What's the team of 16 banners hanging from the ceiling of Staples. <laughs> that team. <laughs> um, Atlanta versus GSW. That's going to be a finals, that's yeah. going to be a massive game. Um, that's uh, right. March 18th. Well, Atlanta took the last one of that matchup. Yeah, it was a good game mm, to watch. It was. Toronto versus Chicago. Yep. That's a good game. Yeah, I think that's just going to be good East. to watch. It's going to be good That'll to be watch. a second round matchup, I think, in uh, the playoffs. Another big game out of the East, Chicago versus Cleveland. Yep. Yeah. Cleveland, what's up? Yeah. Hope they that's take a good... Um, Chicago what do you, what do you, call it? you know when you have like the Battle of the Bridge, uh, yeah. the rivalry yeah. game? Yeah, Chicago well, are kind of reeling Rose, at the moment with Rose could be back by then, actually. April oh. the 5th, he, he could potentially possibly be back by quick, then. Yeah. yeah, but you know whether they'd want to chuck him in against Cleveland at this time, you know. How still playing well? Yeah, Powell's been very consistent. He's been playing like yeah. big boy He's basketball. Like he he won't play badly. You know, it's it's hard for him to play a bad game. I think. I think he need you know a change is as good as a break, and it's definitely worked for Powell to get yeah. get in there. But yeah, yep. you know, it's like it, does Tibbs have have any longer than the the Bulls play for the season? Like you know, mm. as soon as the Bulls go, if they don't go deep, is Tibbs I, I gone as so, well? Yeah, I think they've got such a great roster. Obviously, they've been decimated by injuries oh, this year. It's like, a shame had because so many top to bottom. Jimmy Jimmy Buckets' like, yeah. injury was so freakish. Yeah, the, and Meritage's Meritic been out. Their rookie who's been playing great as well. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, why they, I, I don't know why he isn't playing McBuckets more. Um, you know, Josh McRoy. Is it, no, not Josh McRoberts. Um, oh, the the rookie. Yeah, yeah, the rookie that they traded. Uh, he, he'd on. been injured a lot of the year. Uh, yeah. So I'm not sure um, where, where he's at at the he moment. He's a knockdown shooter. Him and Meritich, you know, they're, they're like stretch players as well. So I Meritich. like Meritich. Yeah, yeah his he's, last, he's Meritich's just, last yeah. three games, he's been going off the, off the charts yeah. as well. He's a got big, a nice looking shot. A big game April 7th is going to be the Spurs versus OKC, the battle of the 7th and the 8th in the West. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. At um, OKC as well. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Spurs have been playing great last few games. Uh, they're they're kind of starting to pick up steam. Yeah, yeah, they, man, you know, you know Pop, he knows how to do it. They're better than they've been playing all season. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Absolutely. that's right. But that could be by design, you know. Like, yeah, it could. Yeah, uh, and right, yeah, that, that's the same kind of thing. They've had a lot of injuries this year. Yeah, uh, gotcha. So. You know, 
Let's quickly touch on Jared Hayne announced this week he's going to be signing he signed a three year contract um, with the San Francisco 49ers which guarantees him what to six weeks I think it's about think. six weeks for the boot camp and training camp yeah, yeah. man there was some hate on that 49ers page oh really I, I was, yeah I don't know it was uh, Kempenick or, or whatever his name is he um, threw up a photo of Jared Hayne there and said oh you know, hey, this guy come from the NRL to rugby, yeah. and bro, like the hate that was coming from um, all the uh, like purists, yeah, the NFL guys, yeah, just saying, yeah. oh, these these rugby players are soft and blah blah blah, and it, that was the funniest <laughs> thing about it. They said that they were just soft and like yeah, yeah. he's not even going to be ready for the hits in this game. Oh mate! And so you know, someone just posted up the top ten top ten rugby hits, hits of, or you know, yeah. and these guys would kind of be like. Yeah. yeah. Well, I saw some footage of him um, just doing like basic drills, like you I know, turn that, and yeah, pass catching. Yeah. Man, he yeah. looks great. He looks right. Yeah, he yeah. looks great. Uh, the the concern with him is um, rugby is obviously, um, and and I guess rugby league as well as is, is very all round game. You've got to be good yeah. at everything. NFL, yeah, yeah. you don't have to be. You've got to be That's good at right. one there's thing. There's more utility players on a mm-hmm. rugby and a league. Yeah, field. there's there's not I'd many like to know utility where he's players. Slot into a team. They, they see him as know, a halfback. Yeah. yeah. What okay. is the what is the function of a halfback? Halfback's like running know. back. Yeah. Uh, right, so basically, you're you're the guy that the quarterback snaps the ball. They hand it off to you. You're the guy that runs up through the sure. through the big guys. So he's just going to be doing running plays. Th- that's what they, they seem yeah. like, yeah. But I he mean, was running a lot of those in the in the footage I've seen. They were, they were running a lot of routes with him and sort yeah, of yeah. yeah. And he was doing he was doing well. punt returns. And that's all typical drafts sort of stuff. And the punt though. returns, yeah, special yeah. teams. I think he would combine. To be honest, I think a rugby uh, and rugby league player would be great at kick returns because I've got that natural ability sure. of you catching it. And in rugby, there's no fair catches. Yeah, you catch right. it, you've got to go. Yeah. And so I think he'd, he'd slot in really well at that role. Uh, the question I have about him is, is he going to be quick enough? Because NFL guys are bloody quick. Sure. And then is he going to be able to run in pads? He can run, he's never he can run the that. 100, I think, in just over 11 seconds. So it's, yeah. well, also it's, quick. it's quick, it's not... You got, you got it's pretty quick. NFL is always about you. Know, they always measure the forty yard dash, Once which is like your acceleration. Is, yeah, is yeah, really yeah. what it's about. And yeah, I, running in pads. He's never. I was going to say. That. I think sure. the hardest part of this would be converting to running in full kit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, like it's not particularly not heavy. Same as cricket. I think. I think for a player like him, he's coming out of a sport where he's doing a lot at a lot of the time. He's involved quite a bit. Yeah, right. I don't think the pads are going to be a huge issue to him, other than um, movement yeah. in regards to the heat like and the speed. And it, yeah, yeah. I think he's going to be fine. Especially because it's such a stop-start nature of the That's sport, right, yeah. and also the stop-start nature of the halfback role. So. I've always wondered. I've never worn NFL pads at all, but even in like it is, it is a good one to talk to you about this. Yeah, if yeah, it was sure. Even like in, in cricket gear, if you're trying to like <laughs> catch a ball. And it's you like don't not catch a ball in your gear. And your natural <laughs> range of motion because you've got pads on. and You, you can't catch yourself <laughs> out. You can't put your hands straight up, maybe. You've oh, got to right. go forward a little bit well, and then up. It can no, impact no, you, your yeah, natural no, no, no. The way, the way the pads are designed, so you watch these guys, they, they've got maximum, they've got as much, they've got maximum movement on their shoulders and yeah. stuff. You can reach yeah, it's, straight it's, up. Yeah, that's not an issue. Okay. Yeah. This, is, this is the technology we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Super Rugby, of course, was back this week. The Highlanders beat the Chiefs 20-17. to Yeah, it was a great game. Brumbies beat the Force. 27 to 15, easy one there, I think, for all, all of us to pick. Yeah. And the Waratahs destroying the Reds 23 5. But the one that is a topic of conversation is the Lions beating the Blues last night 13 to 10 at QBE Stadium. Yep. I'm telling you now, there is no way the Blues should ever play at QBE Stadium. Man, it wasn't for this Cricket World Cup. It's a hard, hard time to be a Blues fan, eh? Oh, last, mate. I mean, not just the last, last five decade. years. Last decade. <laughs> yeah. But uh, just, it's particularly hard now, eh? You know, I don't know. Is, is the belief there in JK? He came out and said, hey, guys, look, I'm staying here. This is my team. I love the guy, man, you know, but, geez, is it time for him to go? Is it really? You know, ca- how much responsibility does get put on the players for just basic elementary mistakes, you know? Is that coachable, some of this stuff? Is it not? I don't know. Well, I don't think it's elementary mistakes. I think elementary mistakes, uh, all those mistakes have been caused by pressure that's been created because of their systems. So if you watch what they're doing there, they're not getting enough people around the field into second phase pods and things like that. So right. the Blues are sh- and the blues look like they're struggling um, with a little bit of fitness. The Blues look like they're struggling... Um, uh, gelling as a team, and yep. those two things. Firstly, th- those are coaching. Those are coaching areas. Yeah, those, those are areas that the back staff need to look yeah, after. I think right. it's it's selection as much as coaching. Like you say, the the chemistry of the team. Teams that win have good chemistry. I mean, it's you know, it's a given. But, but chemistry is not just created on the field, though. Yeah, that's what I mean. So the Blues haven't looked good, and they've had the they've had the right sort of players the last five years to really have a crack at it and it just hasn't worked it has not looked good and they, that chemistry is not there so what's going on I disagree the Blues don't look good the Blues look okay what the problem is there is that they're having some issues in finishing what they're setting up and 
part execution. Of, and the, yeah, the final execution is some of the things that they're having problems with. Now, yeah, you can put some of this stuff down to players, but it's pressure that's being created by them not setting out their phases correctly yeah. and the systems that they've got in place. JK, which should never have been coaching the Blues the way he did, he came out of uh, coaching after coaching Italy and Japan and jumped right into a Super 15 rugby team. This was a decision that was made by the, the old Blues board based on nostalgia and then kept them yeah, there based on the boys, new, boys the new management as well. Sure. Uh, uh, he should never have been there. Um, Mate, I'll tell you who should coach that team and they would not lose would either be Sean Fitzpatrick or Zinzan Brook. I have no idea how good they are as a coach. But They're they terrible. Do, they do not like <laughs> Sean Fitzpatrick doesn't coach in Zinzan Brook. I'm sure they would. Zinzan Brook had a very, very <laughs> short player <laughs> coach career at uh, Bath. Okay, that, yeah, actually that's true. They should be, Harlequin, they, sorry. They should be in the mix somewhere because those guys just do not like losing and don't really accept it. I don't think John, John Kerwin likes losing though. No, I, I, I don't I, think anyone likes no, losing, no, no. but yeah. I'll tell you what. Two people that I've seen over the years that have just absolutely detested losing was in Zambrook and Sean Fitzpatrick. It's two Buck things Shelford. I remembered. As much as, I, as much as I love the sentiment of those, those, sorts of those sorts of things, at the end of the day, you need... You, uh, the, I'll give you an example. Graham Henry never played top class rugby football. Yep. Yeah. He actually he actually created his coaching career out of coach, coaching at Kelston Boys High School. That's yeah. right. Yep. He as a guy who is smart and understands angles and he understands the way that the game should be played but he's also an innovator who is able to look at the game and think about ways that you can take um, um, you can find holes in, in, in defences through creating systems that do that so for instance an example would be they would have the team would have a system where they, they go out there one day and they're like okay uh, we're going to play a certain game system which means we're going to push to this side then push to that side then they call the second phase plays off what the system is doing. If the system's not working, they change the second phase right, plays and things right. like that. So they do what they they do their um, they call it phase mapping, where they've got these phase mapping situations where they cre- are designed to create holes sure, in the yeah. defense when they move into second so phase routes. Yeah, execute then, A will if, give you B. Yeah, we'll if give X you C. happens here. The, yeah, then so the idea is we're going to yeah. the All Blacks did the South Africa about four years ago. So what they were doing was they knew that these South Africans were a lot slower than the All Blacks. Yeah. and if they could, and that's why the All Blacks even today win in the last. 10 minutes is because they spend 70 Fatigue. minutes wearing the team down yeah. side to side side to side side to side yeah. with the goal of being eventually they're going to create holes up in the middle yeah. now whether it's in the 5th phase or the 17th phase it's all about them creating that, those systems yeah. JK for me doesn't understand that he, he's a smart guy but I don't think he's rugby smart. Yeah. As a rugby player, he wasn't a rugby smart footballer. Yeah. He was an X-Factor player who could move in and out. And rugby is one of those sports where you can't take an X-Factor player and make, turn him into a top coach. Sure. You have to understand the work that everybody needs to do in the team. You have to understand the way that the Fords work. You need to understand the way that the Ford pods work. You need to understand if you're a Ford, if you're, if you're like a, um, a Buck Shelford's a good example of a guy who never really quite understood what needed to be done in regards to how a backline attacked. And right. so you had a guy who had said, and I went to numerous coaching sessions with Buck Shelford and he would talk about this and this and the role of the forward and the role of that but how does the role of the forward impact the role of the back the later yeah. on down the line and so you can't take those sorts of players and that's, right. that's what they've done if you have a look at all, if you look at the, the in my mind the top five all black coaches of all time Steve Hansen who played provincial rugby for Canterbury yeah. and he was a pretty average player at that Robbie Deans yep Robbie Deans was an all black um, but he was he was he wasn't he wasn't an all, a superstar All Black at the time. His brother Bruce yeah. was. Mm. Um, Graham Henry never played top level football. Um, John Hart. Laurie, uh, yeah, John Hart. John Hart. John Hart played for Auckland. Yep. Yep. Um, he played in provincial rugby, but he never played for the All Blacks. You don't necessarily have to be an All Black to be a top coach. I totally agree with that. I have no problem with a, a, any sport a coach well, that's, that's not being the, a top level that's sport. The trend you know? in most but when sports. you've got a team, we've yeah, got, you're, you're right. Because you've got what? coaching as a as a as a separate skill of its, its own. That's know? right. So you've got in the in the Auckland in the Blues team at the moment, you've got six or seven All Blacks on that side. Yeah. So you've got six or seven players that Steve Hansen has picked out because when when they're selecting, that they're, they're not watching what's going on in the game. Yeah. They will watch one player for 10, 15 minutes and they'll watch another play for 10-15 yep. minutes yeah, yep. so they've picked up skill sets that these guys need to become All Blacks and what they can offer to the team and they yep. do it well Jerome Kaino even yes. guys like Charlie Piotel who came in out of you know he was an X-Factor player for a bit there yep. but mm-hmm. they've brought him in there he's not even playing for the All Blacks in the position in which he can show X-Factor in centre or fullback he's playing on the wing because they've seen facets of his play that they think were skill sets that they think are going to contribute well to the All Black makeup. yeah the, yeah. What we're, mm. where they're missing here is that you've got all these guys, but you don't have somebody who can take these skill sets and put them into, in, 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 into the right, you know, the right mold, the right design, system. the right system. It's like you say, you yeah. know, it's like and 
there's a difference between tactics and strategy. Like, you know, strategy is a, a deeper sure. understanding of yeah, multiple yeah. tactics. And Kuhn's been talking in press conferences all week about, um, in fact, um, about the system. He keeps talking about, oh, you know, what the I've system's the system getting system there. It's going to work. Yeah, the system. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to get there. We just got to believe in the system and believe Give it in a that. chance well, for what? three more years. Yeah, but what system? <laughs> what system are you talking about? You got and a five-year plan. The, prob- I, the problem for me with the Blues is, and and John Kuhn's system, is that half of the team looks really good and the other half don't. And what I mean by that is the Blues forwards are looking very good. Yep. They're looking as one of the better packs, you know, through their preseason games and through last night's game, and and the the forwards are doing their bit. Their stats are impressive. They're looking good. It's just the cohesion between the two the two units, the forwards and the backs, is just it's just not happening. It's not, it's not working, you know. So it, yeah, where's the system going wrong? You it's, know, it's because but yeah. It's I think the only conclusion we should draw from this is that Dan should probably uh, write his application in for the coaching job. What do you reckon, Dan? Go uh, for it. Mate, as long as I've got the representative sportsman next to me named Matt Rose, exactly. we'll be fine. <laughs> exactly. NRL kicked off this weekend, and I tell you uh. what, the Warriors going down round one. Hey, but you know what? NRL titles are not won in March, so That's I'm not right. too worried about that. So yeah, I'm consistent. not worried about that. I think it deserves some attention, though, because I, I truly believe that was one of the worst Warriors performances I've ever watched. And the reason I think that is because, and again, this comes back to the, the sort of, is it a coaching fault or not? Is I don't think so by any means that there was any coaching errors in that game. What it was is when I say the fundamentals and those sorts of mistakes was, you know, three drop balls straight over a try line that would have been held against a better team that just the the, the, the energy wasn't there. They got ahead. They were dominating that game for 60 minutes. Newcastle comes back with 12 men and scores two tries against us, loads on 20 points in the last 20 minutes. It's just, it was terrible. It was lacklustre. And it just, it was actually, frankly, almost depressing to watch. Yeah. Anytime you've got a team that uh, just gets destroyed in the last few minutes of the game, you've got to bring up conditioning as well. Like They didn't they, look conditioned, did they? Like well, Yeah, were they just mm. gassed? I mean, it was obviously early in the season, and your, your, your From, game yeah. fitness is going to come in later on. For me, I thought the Knights pack was what killed the Warriors. They really took a lot of sting out of them. They smashed them up front. Yep. And I think the Warriors, I think the conditioning and all that was affected by that later on down the line. You've got to give them some credit. The, the, oh, yeah, the, Knights, the Knights were think, by, far, think, by far the better team. I do think yeah. the Warriors lost that game. I don't think the Knights won that. They, I think they that did lose that game. Yeah, I think they lost that game. Tigers um, beat the Titans in a cliffhanger, 1918. Oh, that's Very cool. Close. The Roosters beat the Cowboys, 28-4. The Eels in a massive win the other night, Thursday night, oh, to there. kick off the. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, sorry, on Friday night, 42 to 12. The big blowout. Danger, this week. eh? Danger there. And, and big problem for the Eagles that they've got there moving forward is that they've now lost Kieran Foran in the week. He announced that he was moving on to the Parramatta Eels. Yeah. And the other day, Daly Cherry Evans has decided he is going to go to the Gold Coast Titans. Yeah, this, so, that's going to create some interesting shifts around. That Eels team, man, when they get a hold of Foran, yeah, well, that's, a, that's a championship directly team. Directly going to affect them, that's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the opening game of the season, Souths beat the mighty Brisbane Broncos 36 points to 6. Tonight we've got the Panthers versus the Bulldogs and the Sharks versus the Raiders. Hard to pick any winners, but... Interest, I'm interested to see how the Panthers go. I'm interested to see how the Sharks are going to go. See how, see how they come off the back of what happened last season and everything. It is a sporting lockdown. It's it's a time to say goodbye as we get ready to venture into sport and ball period. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Matt Groves, thank you very much for coming in Thanks, boys. and it's discussing a, a little bit of sport with the team. Nate, the white guy, what's your plans for the afternoon? Sleep. Yeah. You are a boring, thrilling. Yeah. You are a boring, boring man. <laughs> Nate's, Nate's going to go take in the excitement that is the NBL finals. And um, <laughs> support the breakers. Yeah, that is that right? Nick? Really high quality basketball that everyone loves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And JB, we're going to be back in just a little bit. We're going to talk some MMA, some UFC. We're going to talk some boxing. We're going to talk a whole lot of stuff. But remember, it is a sporting lockdown every single Sunday afternoon. Or you can download us. Where can you download us? Well, we're everywhere, man. We're on Stitcher, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube. We've got an awesome YouTube channel. Uh, check us out. Everything's on our Facebook we have a SoundCloud. page. SoundCloud. RedTube. Yeah, SoundCloud. I like SoundCloud. Red Pornhub. SoundCloud. Yeah, you Pornhub. Pornhub. Favorite us on SoundCloud. Yeah, Pornhub is a new app that we're working on. Dan's got a feature. It's a sporting lockdown. Good to everybody <laughs> listening in to us. We're going to be back in a little bit. This is Thrift Shop right here on SFN. Presented by Tap Room. 74 Wyndham Street. The ultimate sporting hub. www.drinkfromthetap.co.nz. F-F-N-S-F-N